This is a bold request on the part of Nehemiah. He was not afraid to ask for a great, for a generous help because he knew the king had the resources to help. Indeed, he was a man of faith and courage. The boldness of Nehemiah reinforces my belief that when we personally ask God something, don't settle for something less. Ask not for something less, but for something more than you need. Let's not be too selfish in asking only for ourselves. Let's think also of others, especially the Lord's work. Nehemiah faced a God-sized project, the building, the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. The circuit of the wall was more than a mile long. And the new wall needed to be three or four feet thick and 15 to 20 feet high. It's a big project. This, is, this, this was not going to be easy. But Nehemiah knew that he and his people had to give their best to it. The same is true for us. Kingdom work is demanding, but it's worth our energy. His strategy prayer, and partnership. In these two chapters, we see Nehemiah's strategy in building the walls of Jerusalem. That is, through prayer and partnership, he prayed to the God of heaven, but he didn't pray for God to send someone else. He offered himself as if saying the word of Isaiah, here am I, send me. Moreover, he did more than praying. He invited the king to become his partner in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. In verses 6 to 9, Nehemiah asked and received three things from the king. It's a 3P. First is permission to go to Jerusalem and rebuild it. Number two, protection. Letters for the governors for safe travel and assistance. And number three, provision. Letter for the finance officer to provide him the resources he needed. However, as usual, Every time we try to do something in the service of God, there will be always be Sanballat, Tobiah, and Jezebel, whom Satan will use to oppose, hinder, and discourage God's people to do the work of God and accuse them of rebellion against the king. Nehemiah's mission trip to Jerusalem. Nehemiah did not just pray, plan, and talk regarding the people of Jerusalem and its walls. He actually did a mission trip to Jerusalem. He traveled 800 miles from Persia to do the work of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he assessed the situation firsthand and met the leaders, rulers, priests, nobles, and working people of Jerusalem. Nehemiah's challenge in verse 17, he said to them, 
you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste, and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. The rebuilding of the wall has something to do with God and his glory. It is about removing a condition of shame and distress. It means God is with his people. But if Jerusalem lies in waste, they and the city are a reproach to the Lord. So Nehemiah's challenge was, come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Nehemiah focused on the glory and greatness of God. Moreover, Nehemiah identified himself as one with the people. He did not say, you have a problem. He didn't say that. But he acknowledged the problem that we are in. He did not blame nor criticize them. Instead, he shared the plan and asked them to partner in this venture. He believed that if God could move the heart of a pagan king, he could also move the hearts of his own people to do this God-sized project. Nehemiah acknowledged that if the people of God work together, much can be accomplished. In Nehemiah's plan, he understood that he was not there to do the project by himself, nor to ask the Jews to do it by themselves, but to partner with them. He showed the need to work with people. So he asked for their partnership, he said, Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem. Ellen White comments, the secret of our success in the work of God will be found in the harmonious working of our people. There must be concentrated action. Every member of the body of Christ must act his part in the cause of God. According to the ability that God has given him, we must press together against obstructions and difficulties, shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart. Review and Herald, December 2, 1890. In our time, the great harvest is ready, but where are the reapers? That's the question. The great harvest is ready, but where are the reapers? Our mission is crystal clear. We exist to make disciples, and this can be accomplished if we go and make disciples again. Again, Ellen White said, every soul should take an active part in advancing the cause of God, whatever our calling as Christians, we have a work to do in making Christ known to the world. We are to be missionaries, having our own, having our chief aim, the winning of souls to Christ. Testimonies, volume six, page 427. Nehemiah's encouragement. In verse 18, I told them of the hand of my God, which has been good upon me. Nehemiah encouraged the people in the Lord by telling them what God had already done in the heart of the king of Persia and how he had been touched by the Lord to support the rebuilding of the wall. This work was not his project. He assured them that it was God's project. His appeal was focused not to himself, but to God and his leading. The response to Nehemiah's challenge. 
In verse 18, God moved the hearts of his people and they responded. Amen? Let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. The Jews were convinced that the time was right to build the walls. Warren W. Worsby comments, it takes both the hands of leadership and the hands of partnership to accomplish the work of the Lord. Leaders can't do, can't do the job by themselves and workers can't accomplish much without leadership. Nehemiah's faith, in verse 20, Nehemiah lived by faith as he faced opposition. The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. He displayed his confidence in God despite of oppositions and scornful attacks from within and without. He did not argue with his opponents, he did not allow problems and oppositions to sidetrack him nor discourage him. He acknowledged that they were God's servants with a mission to arise and build and pursue the work set before them. In chapter 3, Nehemiah showed the strategy how God's people, regardless of age, ability or position, church people, business people, common people, and even their daughters work together to finish the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. This chapter is filled with more than 50 names who work together in one accord. One of the common praises repeated over and over again in this chapter is next to him, after him. That means they work with one another side by side. Nehemiah organized these people to work simultaneously, side by side, and for maximum efficiency and effectiveness. He assigned them to work in the section of the wall that was nearest to their respective houses. That is the strategy. He distributed the different section of the wall to its head of the family and made them accountable and responsible for the section assigned to them. The result. In spite of internal and external difficulties, this god size supposed to be multi-year project. The rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem was finished successfully. Nehemiah officially declared, so the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. Amen. Moreover, Nehemiah declared, when all our enemies heard of it, and all the nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened on their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Nehemiah 6.16 The kind of spirit manifested by the people in Nehemiah's day must be lived by every member of our church today. Imagine what God can do through us if we work together as one. Imagine if every man and woman, young and old, rich and poor, have one heart and soul actively engaging in various ministries of the church, 
we can make a difference in this world. Turn the world upside down and accomplish the mission God has set before us. Here are the important lessons we can learn from the first three chapters in the book of Nehemiah. Number one, friends, nothing is ever going to change in our life. In the life of our church and of our nation until we become concerned about Christ and his great commission. The people God can use are those who have burden for God and his mission. Are you ready to allow God to do great things through your life and ministry? Number two, prayer is crucial in any situation in life that we cannot afford to miss it. I'm so thankful that our church is pushing now uh, the, 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 the group, uh, the prayer group that we are in our church. It's very helpful in our ministry. We know that it didn't happen by chance. Remember, Nehemiah prayed over and over again for four months to grant him mercy in the sight of the king. And I remember when I heard the story of Pastor Yu when they start to buy this place. The pastor is praying, the church is praying for it. And something like, it, it will not happen, but God is in control. The church is ours now. Can you pray fervently and wait patiently in an answer, prayer, in an answer to your prayers? Number three, God can use not only the believers in advancing his kingdom. He also used the unbelievers like King Artaxerxes to accomplish his will. So be wise in finding, approaching, and utilizing the right people whom God can use to accomplish his mission. Number four, when you do something in the service of God, you will face both internal and external oppositions. Serving God is not all smooth and rosy. Keep focus on your life's purpose and mission and move on regardless of any inevitable difficulties you may face. Number five, in Nehemiah's journey to success, he laid down the strategy in the rebuilding of the wall and organized the people and the division of labor among them. In other words, success does not come by chance or accident. There must be a corresponding strategy or plan that is in harmony with God. Do you have a plan in getting involved in the Lord's work? How do you pitch into work together with others who are also working for the Lord? And number six, the last one, live by faith even in times of crisis and difficulties declaring that the God of heaven himself will prosper us and move on with confidence no matter what. Friends, brother and sister in Christ, as Nehemiah succeeded in reaching his goal of bringing glory to God by completing the task given him to do, may we also be able to accomplish the task God has set before us. Together, we can do it. In Jesus Christ's name.
closing hymn is number 79. Oh, love of God, how strong and true. It's time. Church, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Sabbath, a blessed Sabbath day, and a blessed week. You're dismissed.